What's up everyone, Ibra here with Hardware Connects. And external GPU enclosures have been an interesting topic to discuss uh, because for one, uh, it is an awesome add-on for your portable setup, especially if you're someone uh, who always carries an Ultrabook on you and if, the, if, if that is your primary device. And if you wanna get uh, you know some extra performance out of it, especially when it comes to gaming or just other productive tasks, uh, adding or harnessing the power of a desktop class GPU uh, can definitely come in handy when it comes to uh, you know, better frame rates or just uh, lower render times and all that kind of stuff. So as you can clearly see, I've been testing the Razer Core X uh, with the Razer Blade Stealth and of course a few other devices which I'll get to later on. But I wanted to talk about my experience using this guy and overall uh, talk about why it even exists and why would someone or why would you even consider spending you know $300 for an enclosure and of course the extra investment when it comes to uh, the graphics card. So I'm gonna walk you through my experience using the Razer Core X right after a message from our sponsor. The new Enermax Lick Fusion is their first addressable RGB all-in-one cooler with a standard 240ml rad and absolutely beautiful RGB ring illumination on the fans and the pump to highlight that unique flow indicator through the transparent top. Check out the Lick Fusion down below. All right, so let's quickly go over the design of the Razer Core X. So if you're familiar with the Razer Core V2, they should feel like home, albeit it's a lot bigger than the Core V2 because it can accommodate uh, larger graphics cards. But th this whole thing is crafted in a gorgeous CNC anodized aluminum finish. The front panel is made out of plastic materials, but uh, the whole thing is, it blends in really well with uh, the uh, aluminum finish, of course. And it looks stealth. I mean, you're not gonna notice there are no fancy gamery elements uh, throughout the chassis, it's just, pure, it's minimalistic. I love the design of the Core X. Uh, you've got mesh materials on the side for airflow, which is great. Uh, and this thing weighs 15 pounds, which is a lot, but considering that you're gonna be placing this uh, stationary at your desk, it shouldn't be a big problem. And for size comparison, here's a shot of it sitting beside an ASRock Destiny GTX. This thing is 2.7 liters uh, in volume. Uh, and of course, as you can see, the Core X is certainly not small. It is a huge enclosure. So you definitely have to find some room in your desk space to accommodate uh, this guy. Not to mention, this thing is just as big as a fully loaded ITX system, which is just ridiculous. In terms of features, the Core X is certainly lacking a lot of that when compared to the Core V2. Remember, this is a $300 enclosure compared to $500, but there are a few improvements when it comes to powering Ultrabooks. So the USB-C power delivery is at 100 watts when compared to 65 on the Core V2. Uh, this thing can also support up to three slot graphics cards without a problem. So if you do end up picking up aftermarket solutions like the ROG Strix uh, series, uh, you shouldn't have a problem accommodating uh, that large graphics card inside the Core X. Whereas with the Core V2, it's only compatible with 2.2 solid graphics cards. So ideally, your best bet would be reference-based GPUs or even ITX-based GPUs that are much smaller in size. As for connectivity, well, as I mentioned earlier, you're not gonna be getting a lot with the Core X. So the only port on the Core X is a USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port that you can use to connect or establish a connection between the Core X and the notebook, and that's pretty much it. You are not gonna be getting extra USB 3.0 ports or LAN port like what you would get with the Core V2. Uh, and of course, you won't get things like a chroma RGB lighting. So those are some of the things to keep in mind. Getting into the Core X is fairly simple. All you have to do is gently pull the lever located at the back, then pull out the compartment from the enclosure. You can then remove the PCI slot cover that's installed by default, install your graphics card, into the PCI slot, just like installing one onto a motherboard, and tighten the bracket with the included screw. The last step is obviously to connect the power cables into the GPU and slide the compartment back into the enclosure and lock the system with the lever, and that's it. Now, Razer has integrated a 120 millimeter fan for intake to bring in cool air for the GPU. You can technically replace the stock fans with aftermarket solutions from Noctua or Be Quiet or uh, your preferred brand. The Core X comes with a built-in 650 watt PSU where it can supply up to 500 watts for the graphics card and the remaining 100 watts for powering your notebook. This means you wouldn't have a problem with power delivery issues with NVIDIA-based graphics cards like a Titan XP or even uh, GTX 1080 Ti. Uh, you wouldn't also have a problem with NV uh, AMD-based graphics cards like a Vega 56 or 64. And what's even interesting is that the Core X can also support Quadro-based graphics cards. And if you're looking uh, to see if uh, your graphics card is compatible with the Core X, make sure to head over to Razer's website. They do have a compatibility list uh, under the tech specs. So just make sure that it makes uh, it is compatible. But nonetheless, I think you should be okay when it comes to installing uh, you know, NVIDIA or AMD-based graphics cards. Now the included 0.5 meter Thunderbolt 3 Type-C cable is 
pretty short in length. Uh, and one of the challenges when it comes to routing this uh, within your setup is that you need to have the notebook right beside the Core X because the cable is pretty short. So if you're looking to place a Core X on the left side and have the notebook on the right side, well, you're definitely gonna have a lot of challenges with the short cable. Razer does offer a two meter cable rated at 40 gigabits per second speed for $60. But do keep in mind that the maximum power delivery is only at 60 watts versus 100 watts with the stock 0.5 meter cable. Remember, there's a lot of bandwidth to transfer between the Core X and the notebook with just a single Type-C cable over here. So length could be a discerning factor when it comes to bandwidth limitations. So that's something to keep in mind. I think the only thing that you should need to be worried about is power delivery for the notebook. The Blade Stealth shouldn't have a problem because uh, it is rated at 60 watts in terms of power delivery. So uh, you could technically get away with a two meter cable and not experience bandwidth issues or performance issues in that realm. But if you're connecting a slightly powerful notebook that requires 100 watts for power, then obviously a longer cable wouldn't make a lot more sense. And one of the suggestions that I would do when it comes to setup or setting up the uh, Blade Stealth or any Ultrabook with the Core X is perhaps get a vertical docking station, uh, more like a stand or something where you can place a notebook like that and have the Core X right beside it. So that would obviously eliminate the clutter and make, it'll sort of clean things up. So ideally I'd highly recommend planning out your setup before even considering investing on the Core X. Or if you do invest, or if you do decide to invest uh, on the Core X, then obviously you would have to make a few setup changes uh, within your space. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the setup process was actually a lot easier than I thought. I had the blade open in the background and all I did was just plug in this cable from the Core X to the Blade Stealth and the Thunderbolt 3 software automatically detected the Core X and it asked me to uh, allow it for access. So as soon as I did that, it started installing the PCI drivers and all that kind of stuff. And after a quick restart, I saw NVIDIA drivers right on there, which was absolutely fantastic. So I didn't have to go in and download them directly, which was great. The one thing that I did do is actually update the NVIDIA drivers because it was running outdated drivers. So I went into the NVIDIA website and I downloaded the latest, updated it just fine, and it ran perfectly. So why don't we talk about gaming performance? To give you some context, I ran Battlefield 1 at 1080p set to low settings and the integrated UHD graphics inside the Stealth dished out 18 frames per second on average. Well, that's obviously expected considering this is a demanding title. After plugging in the eGPU, I bumped up the settings to ultra and I was comfortably able to achieve over 80 frames per second. Now that's an upgrade. Overwatch at 1080p set to low, averaged around 72 frames per second with the UHD graphics. Mind you, this isn't as demanding as Battlefield 1, but after plugging in the eGPU, I got around 117 frames per second at 1080p set to epic settings. Lastly, I ran Doom at 1080p set to low using the Vulkan API, and I gotta be honest, it was a terrible experience. The UHD graphics struggled a lot, dishing out just a tad above 10 frames per second, so that was, yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. But hey, eGPU to the rescue, right? After plugging that in, I got around 110 frames per second at ultra settings, which was just amazing. Now, just for your information, I did decide to test the Core X with a GTX 1080 Ti reference-based graphics card. Uh, so the performance numbers would vary depending on the type of GPU that you decide to invest in and pair up with the Razer Core X. So keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, I guess from all the results that we've seen so far, uh, it's obvious that investing in an external GPU solution would make a lot more sense, especially if you're an Ultrabook owner, uh, because the performance benefits, especially when it comes to gaming, is so much better. You can game comfortably at 1080p uh, with the highest possible settings without a problem. But what about real world applications? So since I am a content creator, I do render videos uh, for work. So I decided to perform uh, a Premiere Pro render test, and the results were actually surprising. So I took a one minute 4K H.264 video and I exported it to the YouTube 4K preset using Adobe Media Encoder. And what's interesting is that Media Encoder automatically detected CUDA, thanks to the GTX 1080 Ti, and the UHD graphics rendered it, the whole video, in roughly 12 minutes when compared to one minute and 41 seconds with the external graphics card paired with a GTX 1080 Ti. That's seven times faster, guys. It's just incredible. All right, so this is another use case scenario for the Razer Core X. So right now I have it plugged into an external display because I wanted to see if we're gonna be getting any performance benefits uh, by plugging or by literally just sending the display signal to an external display to see if we'll be getting that extra performance uh, when compared to just plugging in the Blade Stealth to the Core X and sending back uh, the signal 
to the display or the built-in display on the uh, Blade Stealth. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see. Another cool, or I guess another odd situation that I'm uh, encountering right over here is the lack of I.O. So right now I plugged in my uh, wireless mouse and the receiver is right over there. So that's occupied one USB port and I have an external drive plugged into the Blade Stealth and that's pretty much it. I can't really plug in a mechanical wired keyboard. Uh, I mean, I could go wireless if I want to take that route, but nonetheless, you would still need an extra USB port to plug in the receiver, and that is uh, unfortunate. So after plugging in the external display to the Core X and disabling the built-in display on the Stealth, so all I did was just close uh, the lid on the laptop, I re-ran the gaming benchmarks with the same settings. So Battlefield 1 at 1080p set to uh, ultra settings uh, gave me 93.6 frames per second. Uh, Overwatch uh, at 1080p, again, set to epic settings gave us 138.3 frames per second. And finally, Doom at 1080p set to ultra uh, gave us averaged around 125.3 frames per second. So you can definitely see that there is a performance improvement when you disable the integrated GPU because all uh, the Core X is doing is communicating or it's creating that PCI uh, link uh, with the Core, uh, with the Blade Stealth uh, and the GPU, and then it's displaying or it's literally just displaying that output uh, to an external monitor. So it reduces the bandwidth of sending back that signal back to the display, uh, which would obviously, which gives us that extra FPS boost. So in one way, it is beneficial. You obviously have to consider investing in an external monitor, and there are a lot of prices uh, to factor in when it comes to, you know, using this hybrid setup. But just for fun, I decided to test the Core X with the LG Gram 15 Ultrabook. And my, to my surprise, I was pretty disappointed with the gaming performance uh, with the Gram when paired with the Core X featuring a GTX 1080 Ti. So for instance, Battlefield 1 averaged around 17.2 frames per second uh, with the same settings that I used for the Blade Stealth. I made sure that the drivers were up to date. I even made sure the connection was established. The 1080 Ti was detected by the Gram uh, and it was really surprising to me. Uh, even when I ran Overwatch, frame rates were at 41.5 frames per second and the Doom with the same settings I used for the Blade Stealth uh, were averaging around 61.5 frames per second. So gaming performance with the Gram was definitely terrible, especially when you decide to plug in an external GPU. So I think there is an issue when it comes to the communication between uh, the Thunderbolt 3 uh, cable. I think that's ideally where the issue is or could potentially be the integrated cooling solution from the thran uh, from the Gram notebook. That could be causing a bottleneck. Not really sure, but I wouldn't recommend, uh, you know, investing in an external GPU with if, you, if you're an LG Gram owner because the gaming performance is definitely uh, not impressive. And for those of you who have watched my Intel Hades Canyon review, I'm sure a lot of you in the comments were wondering how uh, an external GPU solution would work with this NUC. Uh, surprise is that, I have good news is that it actually does detect. So as soon as I plugged in the Core X, uh, to the Hades Canyon, the Thunderbolt 3 software automatically detected the Core X with the GTX 1080 Ti, and I did run some tests. So Battlefield 1 at the same settings averaged around uh, 90.1 frames per second. Overwatch, the same settings averaged around 127.7 frames per second. Doom, unfortunately, was not playable. For some reason, the game engine crashed every time that I tried launching it. I restarted the system. I made sure the drivers were up to date. I did all sorts of troubleshooting steps. Could be a driver limitation. There's probably something wrong in terms of drivers, especially since uh, this has, you know, uh, Intel uh, UHD graphics along with Radeon uh, Vega M graphics. So the fact that, you know, it has to disable those GPUs and basically just connected directly to the 1080 Ti could cause some driver limitations or some driver issues. So nonetheless, you could technically pair the NUC with the Core X, but again, this by itself is an awesome product. So um, I just wanted to put it out there. So to conclude, external GPUs are awesome. The fact that you can harness the power of desktop class graphics cards with an Ultrabook through Thunderbolt 3 is just marvelous. Now the processor could be a determining factor in terms of performance and if you have an ultra low voltage processor, you may not be getting optimal performance from a high end GPU like a GTX 1080 Ti with an enclosure that could turn into a serious bottleneck. The Razer Core by itself is an amazing product to work with. Uh, installing the graphics card didn't require too much of a hassle. All you have to do is just pull out the lever, pop in the graphics card, Put in plugging the power cables and then you know bring back the compartment and that's pretty much it it was just a simple setup process and it's just a plug and play solution all you have to do is just plug in this cable from the razor core uh, to an ultrabook like the stealth and the thunderbolt 3 software automatically detects the core x 
you'll start downloading the drivers automatically and you're ready to go right away. And that to me is just great. I mean, you don't have to worry about drivers or crashes or anything, which is, which thankfully I didn't experience while gaming. So that's awesome. So um, I guess, you know, the last thing I wanna talk about is pricing because this is certainly not a cheap investment because the Core X by itself costs $300. And if you add the value of a graphics card, which is another thousand dollars, depending on what you wanna get, uh, and of course, when you pair that up with an Ultrabook, you are looking at a solid, you're looking at an investment that's way over $2,000. So you're much better off, of course, building a desktop gaming PC and getting those performance. But again, this is targeted towards a certain type of audience. Someone who is looking for a hybrid solution, someone who's looking for an Ultrabook with great battery life, uh, and of course, great build quality. And when they come home, if they just wanna casually sit back and relax and play some games, um, you know, something like the Core X can come in very beneficial. All they have to do is just plug this in, plug, plug, plug in their Ultrabook to the Core X and they can start gaming at higher frame rates, at higher resolutions. So that to me is just awesome. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the Razer Core X. What do you guys think about external GP enclosures? Uh, do you see yourselves utilizing something like this with an Ultrabook uh, if you are, and if you are someone who is, you know, an Ultrabook owner, and if you are looking to invest uh, into an external GP solution, let me know in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.